From our studio in our office at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting. Brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet, Credibility Corp, the leading provider of credit and credibility solutions for businesses. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. Our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. I'm Andy Shook, and thanks for joining us. Today we're introducing Retail Her, our new feature showcasing and honoring the outstanding women in the Walmart community. Next week, we'll be back with Swimming in a Sea of Data. Mod Podge. And we've all heard the name, but not everyone knows where it came from. Today, we'll find out and hear about the category that very well may have started Walmart. But first, the headlines. There's been a lot of buzz lately about the decision by Walmart and other major retailers not to accept Apple's pay. Walmart, Best Buy, and other stores decided to wait for the arrival of Walmart-backed Current C payment system set to debut in 2015. Unfortunately, CNBC is now reporting that Current C's email database has been hacked. Current C has notified those affected by the breach and is taking action to resolve the issue. Walmart India is getting a new chief operating officer. The International Business Times reports that Murali Lanka, a 25-year Walmart veteran who currently works in Texas as a general manager, will start in his new role on December 1st, reporting to Walmart India's CEO, Krish Iyer. Lanka previously worked for Walmart India and was instrumental in developing Walmart's wholesale business there. Sam's Club continues to expand its services to small businesses. In a recent press release, Sam's Club announced its partnership with leading companies in the insurance, payroll, and legal industries, including Aetna Marketplace, ExecuPay Payroll Services, and LegalZoom Legal Services. Sam's Club members will be able to save between 25 and 40 percent on these services. Over the past year, we've heard a lot from Walmart about how it plans to use technology to improve the customer experience. Part of that change impacts how its IT department handles project requests. According to the Wall Street Journal, Walmart IT now works from a unified project portfolio. Projects are prioritized and matched to available resources. This new system is proving efficient, but it's also facilitating communication between departments, particularly when a requested initiative is given low priority and department leaders require an explanation for IT's decision. While many people think of Whole Foods and Walmart as having completely different target markets, recent branding efforts at both stores indicate that this might not be accurate. WGBH reports that as Walmart continues to make inroads into the organic foods market, Whole Foods is fighting back with its Values Matter campaign, which explains Whole Foods' philosophy about product sourcing and the healthiness of its foods. In addition to its public relations efforts, Whole Foods also accepts Apple Pay. A decision is likely to appeal to its iPhone using customers. Your postman may soon also become your milkman? Supermarket News reports that the United States Postal Service has permission from federal authorities to test fresh grocery delivery on behalf of online grocery stores. Earlier this year, the Postal Service partnered with Amazon Fresh in San Francisco to test fresh grocery delivery. The recent decision by the government will allow the USPS to work with grocery e-retailers, although the Postal Regulatory Commission has capped the amount that USPS can earn from the project to $10 million. Join us for Retail Her. Get ready for some inspiration, knowledge, and advice as Loria Oliver speaks with our first leading lady of the season, Mary Zettel of General Mills. I'm Loria Oliver, and today I'm here with one of the retail industry's influential women, Mary Zettel. Mary, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about the new venture that you're embarking on here with Retail Her. Thanks so much for saying that. Let's jump right in. You've been with General Mills for 26 years. What are you doing now? Uh, currently, I am the director of sales for our perishable businesses, so all the frozen refrigerated businesses that we have at Walmart. Wow, 
Wow. Now, you've grown so much within General Mills in the past 26 years. What advice would you have for someone watching right now that's struggling with growing within their company? You know, I think it's important um, as you start anything to really sit back and think what's what's important to you. What do you want to accomplish? Um, take stock of what your strengths are, mm -hmm. um, and and even before you look at what your developmental opportunities are. I think so often we tend to run to where we have developmental areas, and I think by and large it's easier to improve upon something that you're already really good at. And I think you can make a big impact by bringing a strength to be a towering strength in your company. Um, and then secondly, I think take stock as well as to what do you want to represent? So what's your brand? I think we think of brand marketing plans against brands, but you yourself as an individual or as a teammate really are a brand. And what do you want to stand for? So when somebody, you know, if we were paired up to do something, what would you walk into the room thinking I was bringing? And then I think once you establish what you would like that to be, take stock, check back with people. Is that really what they're seeing. Um, you know, if it's important to you to be really thought of as, you know, um, very committed to your work and show good results, check in and make sure. But think through that. I think we often just stumble into careers and um, I think it's it's really powerful and will save a lot of headaches and um, really will move you through faster if you really kind of plan some of that. Now that being said, I don't think it should be too planned right. because you won't be authentic. Um, but at the same time, think through what, what, what do I want to be? What do I want these people to think about me? And it goes beyond how you dress. It goes beyond how you act and what you say to, you know, how you do your work and, and what kind of results you get. So I think that if I had had that piece of advice as I started out, um, I think, um, you know, I'd probably still be in a similar place, but I think it would have been a little easier along the way. I think it's so powerful that you just said to be, be very thoughtful in everything that you do, no matter what aspect of your life that it is, and check back in with people because your viewpoint in the mirror may not be what you're really putting out there. Yeah. I think that's wonderful advice for our viewers. Mm -hmm. I know that you're also very huge um, in mentoring, and you are a mentor. I'm sure you've been a mentee at one point in your life. What advice can you you give someone um, who is searching for the best mentor within their organization to how do they find them what do they say sometimes we're a little intimidated to approach sure. someone that's sure. higher up in the organization as us yeah. so what advice would you have you know mentoring is is often and we had a, a discussion about this yesterday at work I think there's many ways to go about mentoring some formal some informal um, and there's pros and cons to both I think if I was telling someone to how to go about it, um, I think search out somebody that either has an attribute you like or um, you know, is well thought of or has something better yet that you are not good at and they are. Um, I think sometimes we tend to gravitate towards people that are like us mm -hmm. and you know, we may not get the, the same thought process um, if we find somebody um, unlike us, they think differently than us. And so I think that that's one thing that you should think about is don't pick somebody so like yourself because our perspectives all get shaped from where we sit. And so if you can find somebody that's complimentary, because you have to have a spark, you have to get along, um, or you won't want to spend time together. So if search out that person that is enough like you, but not too like you, that will really give you some strong dialogue um, and not see the world the same way. And then think about what you bring to the party too. So we all want mentors, but you can be a mentor or a mentee at any point. Mm -hmm. And think about what you bring to that transaction as well, because, you know, and don't wait to be a leader to mentor. Um, I think for women, it's important that we are, are great partners with each other at every level. Um, as you accelerate in your organization, it is, uh, in my, my belief, it's our responsibility to reach down and pull up. Um, but at the same time, you know, we should be about helping each other. There's room for all of us to succeed. And um, my definition of success is different than yours. There's no reason why us working together, we can't figure out how to both have us succeed. No, that's, that's awesome advice. Also, you had a, an interview a while back and I, I got a chance to read it and something profoundly stuck out with me. You said that people have to choose to be happy. And I think that kind of ties into all of your answers so far about choosing to be thoughtful, choosing to um, seek out uh, something outside of your comfort zone to help you grow. What do you mean by choosing to be happy in every aspect of your life? 
I'm just so excited that I was profound to you. Um, <laughs> but choosing to be happy, I mean, I think so, and in, in you're a young, uh, a young mother, um, and I think there's so many choices that we have to make as women, as wives, and as moms, and as, and as teammates. Um, and I found myself wishing time away. So I'd say, gosh, I'll be happy when this meeting's over in two weeks, or I'll be happy when the stage of my toddlers, I get through that. And I found, you know, months just slipping by. And, you know, I can be happy regardless of where I am. And even in the worst situation, it depends on how you look at it. And your attitude, and you all, we hear the, the, the uh, comment about your attitude kind of dictates your altitude. And the reality is, is that's true. I think there's good and bad in everything, and you can choose which way to look at it. Um, I wouldn't say I, I follow this advice all the time, right. but, you know, think through it. Be grateful. You know, it starts with a full heart, and we're very lucky, and there's sometimes when life doesn't throw us the best, you know, pitch, but at the same time, how we look at it and how we choose to act upon and react to it. And choosing to be happy is one thing that's pretty easy to do once you get started on that, that route, and then it's contagious. I think that's great advice. I hope everyone at home is writing down all of these tips right now because it's something that they can use probably today where they are in their career and then 15 years from now where they are in their career. So Mary, we have a beautiful picture here of you when you were preteen. If you had Lovely. a chance to <laughs> yes, go back and, and tell that young girl maybe three tips to kind of navigate through life, what would those three tips be? Um, concisely, I think it's dream big, um, act courageously and boldly, and believe in yourself. I think those three things will take you pretty far. Thank you so much, Mary, for being here today. You're welcome. I hope everyone at home took down notes. Saturday morning meeting, we'll be right back. Every day, shoppers are bombarded with traditional brand messages outside the store in hopes that these marketing dollars will drive in-store sales. Closure Media drives retail sales by connecting brands with 95 million Walmart shoppers per year while they are in the store. Through innovative programs at Walmart's photo and money centers, Closure Media converts Walmart shoppers to purchasers of your brand. With reported redemption rates up to seven times the national FSI average, Closure Media drives sales. For more info, visit us at ClosureMedia.com. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Bentonville Commerce, less than one mile from the Walmart home office. You'll love the convenience, amenities, and customized options Bentonville Commerce offers. For more information or a tour, call 479-200-1112 today. My colleagues and I were lucky enough to have a custom course put together for us by Ethan Walton, IRS, our instructor. It focused on all the different aspects of what an analyst might need from retailing to work with Walmart. I think what surprised me most is that there were so many things that I had not been using in Retail Link that would be valuable for me and that I hadn't attempted to use yet. Um, and also just some tips and shortcuts. Iris had a lot, has a lot of experience and she knows how to help you find things that are going to help you do your work. Next, we meet Mike McCooey of Plaid. Crafting was one of Helen Walton's favorite pastimes, and that had a little something to do with the products Walmart first offered. Hear the full story right now. If you've ever decorated with decoupage, experimented with needlepoint, or colored with acrylic paint, it's highly likely that you've used a plaid product. Today we're here with the president and CEO, Mike McCooey. Mike, glad to have you here. Glad to be here, Andy. Thank you. So tell us about plaid. Well, Plaid's an um, Atlanta-based manufacturer. Uh, we've been, made in the USA. Made in the USA. We've been uh, around since 1976. We have a very extensive product line of about 5,000 active SKUs. 5,000 SKUs. At any point in time. Wow. And so um, while we have a very diversified portfolio, we're primarily known for our paint as a paint manufacturer. And, and the two primary brands that we're known for are uh, Apple Barrel and uh, Folk Art. Okay. 
And uh, we make about uh, 60 million of those little bottles that you see in a craft store <laughs> every year. And uh, Walmart moves a lot and of those. Those books. paints are used for what? Uh, decorative painting, family projects, um, uh, anything that uh, you would use an acrylic paint for. Okay, but also you're involved with needlepoint, cross stitching, all kinds yeah. of different things that, like that as well. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, our homegrown brands are Apple Barrel and Folk Art Paint, but we also have brands that we've acquired over the years. Okay. Uh, one of which is Mod Podge, which is a decoupage uh, yeah. medium. Yeah, yes, I remember doing that when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, it's it's going to be 50 years old uh, in the next two years, I think, and then. Uh, Another one we have is Bucilla, which is a stitchery brand that we bought in 1996, which is, uh, it's been around for 150 years. So we have a whole stable of homegrown and acquired um, brands that we're always on the lookout and creating more. Yeah. So I remember when Walmart, um, during when they were doing the clean store policy, it looked like right. they were getting, like actually downsizing your category. And they were taking fabric out, they were doing a lot of different things at that time. Have you seen a reversal in that, or is that still the trend? No, I think they realized that uh, crafts was a, a, a requisite of their core customer. Okay. And uh, they subsequently identified it as what they call a heritage category, which is... Um, Explain know. that, because Walmart comes up with these terms, right? Where they, well, say, yeah. they say, this is what we think this, this department is. What does heritage mean? Well, heritage is one of, the, uh, one of the founding core product lines of the company. When uh, Sam and Helen Walton started back mm -hmm. in the Ben Franklin days, you know, they were serving a rural customer, and crafts were not only a leisure time activity, but it was essential because people were making their own clothes, they were making samplers to decorate their walls and so on. So, you know, they even spun off a, a, a crafts chain called Helen's, named after Helen Walton. That oh, they, really? they tried to get into specialty business. They had, I don't know, three or four stores and decided it wasn't for them. But anyway, fast forward to today, um, the craft category still fits their core customer. It's a young mother on a, on a budget mm. uh, looking for family projects, looking for ways to be creative and to and to decorate her home or create accessories or even uh, accessorize her fashion. Right. Pinterest, some of these things, is that driving this or what, what's uh, what's driving the interest? Social media in total is driving it. It is the, the as, as you know, it's just a, a incredibly inexpensive way to exponentially reach hundreds of millions of people. And, uh, you know, the days of the, the newspaper tab and, and you know, the, the, those are ancient ways of, of connecting with the consumer. Sure. And our marketing uh, directive has been to go to the consumer and forget about trade advertising. We want to influence the consumer. We want to work with the Walmart mom. They have a group called Walmart Moms that are very active in product um, judgments okay. and usages. And uh, we work with groups like those, bloggers, Facebook, all of them to um, encourage and expose our product to the core consumer. And what does the market basket look like it's for a, these products? It's, it's very diverse. We've, uh, um, you know, at, at a stockholders meeting one year, one of the officers got up and said, you know, our customers come in here to buy apples and apple barrel. <laughs> and we took that as, uh, you know, the greatest free advertising we could ever get at, at Walmart. But it is very, very diverse and it, and it, it accomplishes Walmart's goal of crossing over from food to general merchandise and back, uh, vice versa. Well, and getting them over to that side of the store. Absolutely. Right, and, and I mean, that's that's what Walmart wants, so they can walk through the home department and through some of the other departments that are over there, and it sounds like the craft department's doing that. So, is it a, is it a niche department? No, as I said, I think the demographic um, fits the Walmart shopper perfectly, and, and you know, it's, while they're not a specialty store and they have to compete with the specialty craft sure. stores, they have the unique ability to curate their assortment getting the best of the best. You know, they can't have 50,000 SKUs and crafts. And that's what we find in, in each of those departments. Exactly, but the advantage the craft department has is that the rest of the store is basically an extension of the craft department. You, uh, the surfaces you need, whether you want to decorate on glass or terracotta pots or, or any other substrate, you can find anywhere in the store. So that's right, they're moving it's around. It's not okay. just, you know, the craft department. There is a, a significant expansion into the other parts of the store. Yeah. Well, before we talk about the comeback of an entire category, um, let's take a quick break. Okay. Saturday morning meeting, we'll be right back.
to get your product noticed by retailers and customers? Rapid Prototypes in Bentonville can help with packaging, displays, renderings, signage, and much more. They are called Rapid Prototypes for a reason. Rapid turnaround and rapid response time to your needs. Need two-week turnaround? Easy. Need two-day turnaround? No problem. Need two-minute turnaround? Let's talk. At Rapid Prototypes, we are always willing to go the extra mile for you. Rapid Prototypes, across from Gasano's Pizza on Walton Boulevard in Bentonville. Call 479-273-3278. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area. Call 479-200-1112 today. What else can you do to make sure your products make it to the shelf? Suppliers know that product flow is critical to having products on the shelf. That's why OSA is a key focus for Walmart and its suppliers. The 8th and Walton OSA course presented in partnership with Crossmark explains the importance of inventory levels and correct labeling and teaches you how to use the tools that measure and improve OSA. Become a smarter supplier. Contact 8th and Walton today. And we're back with Mike McCooey of Plaid. Mike, we talked a little bit about the resurgent earlier, okay. about the category and how it's kind of coming back at Walmart. And, and I assume that, you know, even for do-it-yourselfers and those that, you know, are kind of seeing this category in a different yeah. light. Tell us a little more about that and what's happening. Well, I think that the, first of all, the basic crafting product is, is very popular right now. You know, it's a trend business, Andy. And, sure. And so we go through cycles. For many years, scrapbooking was a big, was the big uh, oh. category. And, and people and then, spend millions on that. Yeah, and cake uh, decorating was another one. And, and okay. there's an ebb and flow to that. And, and right now, basic crafts, as I said earlier. And was your company involved in some of we those? We were not. Dur during those? We were not. And okay. that fact combined with the fact that Walmart was kind of pulling back from crafts was a very uh, tough time for us. But we were, we have a broad enough product line that we were able to adapt. Okay. We were doing things in jewelry and, and surfaces and other areas that we weren't traditionally in. So we have the ability to be kind of, uh, to morph as sure. you will, depending on, on the market. But uh, as those categories started to add, basic crafts, which we consider ourselves with paint and stencils and paint brushes and Mod Podge and It so really on. hasn't died, right? I mean, just the no. staple ones. That's okay. right. And it is, it is the, when you combine it with the trends I mentioned earlier of uh, personalization and uh, uh, re uh, recycling, it, it just was a natural for a resurgence in this category. What about how-to videos, blogs? Um, are the, are are those driving the category as well? They're, they're certainly helping. There's no doubt about it. We spend an inordinate amount of time and, and have invested in, in people, uh, young, savvy, as you can imagine. Yeah. You know, uh, you and I are probably not the demographic for that, but, or I'm not. Anyway, but, <laughs> well, I'm uh, not either. <laughs> but uh, we've invested in people who understand that they've, they've lived with it. It's part of their DNA. Yeah. Uh, they don't know any other way, and they love it, and they live it, and we capitalize on it. And we reach the consumer, which is our number one goal. Um, and the numbers are staggering that you can get to, as I said earlier, with that a lot of money. Sure. So my wife and I, when we, we used to do some home projects and do some different things, we would like try to figure it out or we try to read the manual, but now everybody goes to YouTube. Yeah. It, and and yeah. it's a different generation because I mean, for them to figure something, they don't even have to figure it out anymore. They just have to go in and they can go step by step. They can pause it. Um, is that changing the industry? It is. It's, you know, one of the biggest uh, problems historically with the industry is people are afraid. I, you know, I've always contended that sure. people have, Everybody has some creative muse inside them. I don't care if it's poetry or, or music or whatever, but you got to unlock it, right? Mm -hmm. And without being too dramatic about it, I think that our job is to help unlock it. I think that we have to, con to convince people that they can do it, and we yeah. help them do it. And there's, a, there's kind of a cliche in the craft business that says, you know, our mission as a supplier manufacturer is to do 90% of the work, let the consumer do 10%, but take 100% of the credit. Right, so <laughs> there you go. I mean that's kind of our mission statement, and and every way we can do, any way we can do that, particularly through education, is critical to, it's mission critical for us. Great. What about seasonality? What is that? How does that play into the crafting business? It's 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 pretty much a fourth quarter business. Okay. And, um, and is it because of weather? People going home at that time. Post, I mean, during the winter yeah. time, I feel like I could stay inside more often. Yeah, I think it's especially with the rain we've had the last week. It's it, post back to school. You know, the kids are gone. Uh, holidays are getting ready. You know, people okay. are decorating their homes, and so on. But 
you know, holidays all through the year are very important. Uh, Mother's Day is a big deal for us, you know, with the kids making stuff for their parents, for their mother, and then Father's Day, of course, for the father. And, okay. And then just other, other holidays during the year are very... Uh, uh, very big for the craft industry. So a lot of how-to kits and some different things yeah. that come in there. They yeah. see. Then you, you, I'm assuming that you also have some uh, promotions and things that you're running during that yeah, time. Yeah, we, do, that we makes... do. We do features all through the year that are, are uh, seasonally themed and okay. uh, and caps and sidekicks and so on. And uh, you know, we get a lot of support from Walmart in doing that. How does Walmart support um, dot com? They've got a dot com business as well. Um, do they put in videos in there for you as well? Are there any anything that they do to support uh, the Not crafting yet. business? Not yet. I think they're they're pretty much in the embryonic stage, particularly as it applies to crafts. And we're working with them as a strategic supplier to kind of get them up the curve. Are on there that. others others that do that? There are, but quite frankly, okay. in our industry, it's not uh, it's not that sophisticated yet. So okay. we think it's 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 a you know great new frontier for for all of us to grow the industry without oh, sure. a doubt. Well, and I think you know as Walmart focuses in on different categories when they when they decide that they're going to go in, you know, dot com, you know, continues to be talked about and and continues to be um, um, Walmart's next big thing that they're just going to really focus in on. When what does that look like for your category? You know, we're still figuring out. We we find that uh, people want to buy um, in bulk when, when they're online. They don't want to just buy one little bottle of paint or okay. a, br a paintbrush or whatever. So that's kind of a dynamic that, that we're dealing with. But, you know, the basic philosophy is to develop an omni-channel strategy where, you know, people okay. can buy whatever they want, wherever they want, whenever they want it. And that's our mission to Walmart and others is to help them do that. Right, right. The endless aisle it's often referred to. Sure, sure. Yeah. So what keeps you up at night? Um, well, I'll tell you, you know, we've got, as I said earlier, 5,000 SKUs at any point in time. We turn over 12 to 1,500 of those a year. Turnover, what does that mean? They go away and something else has to come in and replace it. So innovation or innovation. it's seasonal and then you bring it back in the fall? It's innovation. Wow. So the bottom line is trends. So what keeps me up at night is A, missing a trend, or B, being late for a trend because I've got a lot of holes to fill and I've got to fill it with uh, on-trend product, saleable, desirable to today's craft consumer. That's the game. Wow. Yeah. It's, um, it's fun. It's 12, a fun industry. 1,200 SKUs changing over all the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, very, because of that, it's, it's never boring. Our employees love the, love the business because it's not cookie cutter and it's never boring. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mike. You're um, welcome. Telling us your story, uh, what Plaid is doing in the craft industry. Um, very exciting. We and, appreciate uh, the invitation, Andy. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Saturday morning meeting will continue right after this. This is a great place. Steps away from uh, the world's largest retailer. Just a great opportunity to uh, bring buyers and merchants over and, and have good business discussions and, and dialogues about our business. I think there was general shock and awe about the, uh, the technology in the building, about the layout, uh, how thoughtful we'd been in, in the rooms, the technology we'd put in rooms. I think they were literally blown away. We had a lot of Walmart executives here. They were all very complimentary. Uh, they are excited about the opportunity to actually leverage the place to, uh, to work very collaboratively with suppliers and really try and figure out well, how to best take care of the customers in the store and they saw this as a great tool to be able to do that. So we're starting to see a lot of activity in the joint business planning room areas, uh, some in the digital wall areas. Uh, for example, last week this place was 100% full. It's starting to get used the way it was intended to be used. Eighth and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. Eighth and Walton. Our thanks to all of today's guests. In the upcoming weeks, we'll speak with Mike Malone of Northwest Arkansas Council as he shares what's happening today in Northwest Arkansas and what's to come. And we'll meet Jeff Anderman, founder and CEO of Turning Point Capital. He gives us six CPG financing options in six minutes. It's practical and it's fun. 
As always, we appreciate your taking the time to join us. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. I'm Andy Shook, and from all of us at Saturday Morning Meeting, thanks for watching. Our guests enjoy staying at 21C Museum Hotel and hosting dinners, meetings, and product launches there.